Welcome, welcome, welcome to A Queen's Roundtable Leadership Symposium, January. Can you guys believe that we are in the new year? This is so exciting. I am your host, Jacqueline Kabai Harrison, and I am coming to you with this one day virtual event with all different types of boss women that are just doing it from pub publishing to live events to securing speaking gigs. I mean, high paid speaking gigs. We're going to talk about it all. Not in this particular segment, but just for the day. So make sure you definitely check out the schedule. Now, today, I have something really exciting for you all. We're going to be doing Publishing 101. So if you are, have ever been interested in self-publishing, possibly publishing an anthology, maybe you want to start your own magazine, whether it be you know in print or digital, you are in the right place. I have women here that will be able to give you some basics in terms of how to go about doing that, right? So you can do what? Level up your business. So without further ado, I'm going to let the panel introduce themselves. And oh, but wait, I hope you have a pen and a pad. If you don't, run and get it right now because you're going to want to take some notes and jot some things down. All right, ladies. So I guess if we could start it off with just in the order that I see you guys on the screen, uh, Lisa, Tandra, Dr. Talisha, and then Dr. Nikita. Okay. Hi, I'm Lisa Dove Washington. Um, actually, I, I kind of titled it Media Entrepreneur because all of the businesses that I do kind of kind of collaborate with each other. But I have an online magazine called Dove Style Magazine since 2012. I also have my own publishing company called Touch by Dove Publishing that has been up for a few years. Um, and I actually have my own online show called Luncheon with Lisa. So I try to mix it up. So business and pleasure and just having some fun luncheon. Um, so I am happy to be here with all these wonderful ladies. And publishing is something I love to do, whether it's magazine or book. So I'm in the right room, too, because I'm going to learn and, and glean from these ladies as well. Yes, absolutely. I'm sure we're all going to be learning from one another. Thank you so much for agreeing to be here today, Miss Lisa. Absolutely. Yes. OK, I will welcome and hello, everyone. My name is Tandra Price. Uh, I bring just a little bit of different spin to things. I am um, what they call the networking ninja. I specialize in networking strategies and uh, tools. And I have also have a magazine, which is called, it's a digital magazine. It's called Tapped In Magazine. And we've been doing it a little over, almost a uh, little over a year and a half. Amazing networking tool to use. So I'm pretty excited as well, Lisa, to kind of dive in, get some information. I do have my pen and pencil because listen, I believe in <laughs> note takers and money makers. So I'm really excited and ready to get the kind of some of these jewels. Well, thank you, Tandra, for joining us. So much appreciated. Yeah. Hi, I am Talisha Berry, uh, publisher, uh, editor-in-chief of Courageous Woman Magazine, as well as Courageous Men Magazine and Authors Who Launch Magazine. I help women gain visibility by promoting their their books, products, services. Uh, if you're interested in writing a book, I help you from start to finish, from uh, writing it, publishing, and marketing it. Um, I'm happy to be here on this panel with these amazing women. It's always a blessing to be in the company of, of other publishers and women who are doing their thing in this uh, publishing world. So I'm definitely here to learn from these sisters as well. Um, so thank you for having me, Jacqueline Kappa Harrison. I appreciate you much. You're welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Queen, trying to play your royal position. This is your girl, Dr. Nikita Davis, the proud CEO and founder of Jesus Coffee and Prayer Christian Publishing House, the number one Christian publishing house in the land. That's our slogan. That's the story. We're going to stick to it. Come on, somebody. <laughs> God is good and he is worthy to be praised. Look, super duper excited. All of these beautiful ladies. Look, I say, why compete? when we can complete, come on somebody, and we can get this bag together. So not only do we help women to boss up and to level up with their 
are individual uh, self-published books, anthologies, but I also have my own magazine, The Women Win Magazine, which is also a television network that Jacqueline happens to be on, The Women Win Network. Come on, somebody. Yes, <laughs> we. So we are all about visibility, helping queens to gain authority, credibility in this space. As a matter of fact, we were just named Publisher of the Year by Power Conversations oh. Magazine. So God is good. He's worthy to be praised. We've helped about 140 women to become best-selling and international best-selling authors during the pandemic. So look, if you need help, reach out. We'll get you in the game. I'm excited to be here and I look forward to learning and helping you learn too. So let's do it. All right. Well, thank you, Dr. Nikita Davis. And thank all of you for being here. This is so exciting. I love doing these. I mean, you know, I, I, I like when we can actually come together and everybody has a different, you know, we're all talking about publishing, but everybody has, you know, different experiences and, you know, different whys behind behind what you do. So actually speaking of that, and I want to make sure I keep a check on time because I want to make sure that everybody has an opportunity to speak and tell us a little bit about, a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Um, how did, how did the publishing piece come about? I mean, did you just, are you guys writers? Do you just wake up one day and say, you know, I want to publish a book or I want to start a magazine? How did, you know, who wants to jump out there? How did it start? Um, this is um, for me, it started actually, I, I, I have loved writing ever since I was in elementary school. Um, I've always wanted to write. I love paper and pen. Um, I love books in my hand. Um, and I just kind of grew into it. So when I went to high school, I was on the newspaper staff. Um, when I went to college, I wanted to do my own children's um, book with my daughter illustrating it. Of course, she she's 30 something now, so that's not going to happen. But I actually did it anyway. Um, and it's based on me and my grandson. But I have a love of writing. Um, and I started interviewing people for another magazine. And when that went on hiatus, I decided why not try to start my own magazine? It was still in the writing field. Um, and then with the um, publishing books, I actually released my first book, The Power Shut Up, and loved the whole experience of it and decided that I wanted to kind of jump into that as well because it's still in the same arena. Why not? Um, so, yeah, I'm I'm loving every part of it, good, bad, and different, all of it. I love it. That's how I knew it was my lane. <laughs> okay. All right. And I'm, you know what? And I know we'll, we'll definitely come back to this at some point. But I know there's a lot of people out there that are like, I don't have a story to tell. I'm not a writer. So I definitely want to make sure that we address that because I know you all hear that all the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. So who wanted to go next? Uh, I can go next. I'm going to say for me, uh, again, I was just trying to change the, the space of networking. You know, I wanted to bring a new spin on to, you know, how we network. And, you know, publishing took that to a whole nother level. My slogan is each one promote one. It gave an opportunity for us to really be able to support and promote others as, you know, we were trying to expand our network base. That's kind of how I got started. But I mean, long story back, I mean, me and my daughter, when she was, I'm going to say, I don't know, maybe eight or nine, she wrote her first children's book and we did self-publishing at that time. And just the power of what that did just for her, we sold over a thousand copies of her children's book, but it was amazing just to get her voice down, her story. I mean, it's, a, you know, it's amazing. People think they don't have a story, but you really do have a story. You really do. I mean, we're talking each and every day, all day long. You, we got something to say, right? Come on, y'all. Like, like look, the kid to say, come on, y'all. We got something to say. So why not we put it on paper? But yeah, that was for me. I wanted to change the networking space. So I incorporated my publishing in doing that and then allow for each one of us to promote one by putting each person on the front cover of a magazine. Yeah. And you do. And I, I must say, you do a beautiful job. You, you really do. You. Um, Tanja, did, did you say it, it's, di I know it's digital. It's digital and in print as well. Yeah, it's it's digital and I, and I, you can get a printer cop. You can get your copies printed, but it is a digital magazine. And for me, digital goes much further. I'm not knocking paper. And I know you queens over here can help me. I'm not knocking print, but I think digital, you know, if you're trying to expand your network base, gives you a lot more um, opportunity to do that in the digital space. I'm, and I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that too, because I'm sure a lot of people have questions about that. I know I do. <laughs> you know, in terms of, you know, when they're looking to do it, what's the best? What route should I go? So I'm glad you brought that up. Thank you. Okay. 
Hey, I'm gonna just jump in there. Um, you know what? And I think we had this conversation, uh, Queen, back with the Queen's Roundtable, maybe, I don't know, last year. Um, and I forget which quarter it was. You know, you do so much. You know, you impacting lives all over the place. You know what I'm saying? That's what you do, Queen. You know, hey, I love it. I love it. I love to see another Queen um, impact lives and, and touch lives all over the globe. And that's what you do. But for me, like Lisa said, I knew as a kid, right? Um, I love to read. I love to write. I've never been shy. I don't know if y'all can tell. Maybe not. You know, <laughs> so I always love to talk and, you know, write and all of that. So I was the the classroom poet. So really, it stemmed from poetry. I was the class. Mm -hmm. I was, hey. And then when Love Jones came out, honey, you couldn't oh, tell me yeah. I was Nina, honey. I was Miss Nina Mosley, baby. Yeah, My husband funny. don't know, but he's always been Lorenz Tate. He don't even know it. Okay, you have to go watch Love Jones. Okay, focus. focus. What we talking about? Publishing one on one. So, always knew I'm also a comedian. Somebody told me once that I missed my time, but I said, "Where well, I miss my time? I could be all things through Christ who so give me strength." So, anyway, <laughs> bottom line is, as a kid, I always knew that I would write. I knew that one day it would be a best selling author. But what got in the way was this thing called corporate America and paying bills. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, like many adults, I put my dreams to the back burner because I was trying to climb this corporate ladder. I had this five-year plan that wouldn't quit. I was going to be the VP by XYZ and ABC and one, two, three. But God slowed me down by the way of a second child. And when he slowed me down by way of that second child, not only was I birthing my second child, but he rebirthed my dreams. And when oh, he rebirthed yeah. my dreams, I began to write again. And so when I, cause I traveled with my job, I was in leadership and development. I traveled all over the country, internationally, skilling up second level, third level management. So always been business oriented, always knew how to network, like Whoop -whoop, the networking ninja over here. <laughs> she didn't give you her sound effect. I was doing it though. When she said networking ninja, I was like, Whoop -whoop, cause we've done speaking together. We've traveled together and speaking across the country. So, uh, but anywho, I'm going to say this super quick and I'm going to be quiet. But the bottom line is this. When I slowed down where most folks will think you're pregnant. Oh, you can't. That's when God gave me the rebirth of my dream and my vision. And so mm -hmm. I began to write my first book, which was called Jesus Coffee and Prayer. Right. And it really wasn't even that. It was called Attitude of Gratitude. But at the, the 10th hour, I told my editor about the 14th re revision on my book, the 14th. I was like, oh, please. It's my book now. Oh, please. Can we, can we change the name of my book? <laughs> I said, can we change it to Jesus Coffee and Prayer? Because I'm like, I know she's going to hit me through the phone for changing this one more, the 15th version on this book. 15. I would hurt somebody if they came to me 15 times. I'm not doing that, honey. You got two revisions. <laughs> so, so 15. Changed it, and it was Jesus Coffee and Prayer. Obviously, now, those who know me, that's the name of my multi-six-figure company that I have that will soon be, in Jesus' name, by the end of this year, a seven-figure business. And so that's because I listened to what God told me to do and to humble myself and sit myself down long enough so that he could download in me what he wanted me to do, which he told me when I was a child what I would do. But I was trying to climb the corporate ladder and be everything the world told me to be. But once he set me down, he rebirthed something in me that now will be seven figures by the end of this year. That's God. Girl, go close this thing down. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Just shout and say it. <laughs> You're on your position. Sip water. That's right, girl. Go ahead, sip a little water. Because, um, uh, Dr. Nikita, I'm. I've known you now, what, at least a year, right? Uh, I think it's been a little bit longer than a, a little bit longer. I think it's been a little bit longer than a year, okay. maybe a year and a half. We have to go back to a timeline, Queen. Right. I, I think it's been a little bit more than a year, a little bit more. But okay. maybe right Because I met you through Dr. Carolyn, didn't I? Dr. Carolyn Stevens. Yes. Okay. And, and yes. And then yes, I did yes. the, that, um, what, what was it called? The Black and Bold. Girl Boss Tour. Yes, because I hosted the Black, Bold, and Beautiful. Right. So yeah. the Black, Bold, and Beautiful Girl Boss. Oh, yes, yeah, been right of the year. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I did the Black, Bold, and Beautiful Girl Boss. Um, uh, I did the whole month of February where we 
honored. I'm a part of Forbes the Culture, which is, you know, um, a, a platform of Forbes, which is really honoring and uplifting, breaking the barriers for uh, African Americans and people of color. And so with that, in the month of February, we honored with Black women because I said, you know, Black women are Black history. Hello, somebody. Right. And so we honored the entire month. And Jacqueline was one of the honorees. We had them featured at the Super Bowl on a billboard. And it was just amazing. It was just a whole month of just girl, Black girl star power, honey. We had Loretta Clark giving shots out, giving shout outs, uh, Jacqueline Carr. It was just a whole bunch of just amazing. It's like, yeah, you're right. I forgot all about that. Okay, keep it moving. This is a whole program. <laughs> I was saying that because, girl, you you do so much and uplift and empower so many women. See that you, you see that you have forgotten all about that. You know, and this I probably did. I, I forgot so about the movement, impacted. but I forgot that that was in February, right? And then we hosted yeah. the event in Miami. We did the retreat, and Dr. Mm -hmm. Cheryl Wood came for that, mm -hmm. and that was amazing. So yeah, we did that in Miami. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. yes, ma'am. Praise God. Won't you do it? But I, I was, you know, I, and I, I think probably Tandra, we're just kind of, you know, getting kind of, you know, coming in contact with one another and you and I, Lisa, but Talisha, Dr. Talisha, I know we've been kind of rocking for a minute too, you know, and I appreciate your support. But wh where was I going with that? Where I was going was sometimes I had these little moments, honey. My, my thoughts just get away from me. Squirrel, that's why we get along because it'd be squirrels in the room. Y'all see the squirrels? <laughs> they just climbing. <laughs> But I was just going to comment that, Dr. Nikita, I have literally, just in this short amount of time, I just have to say this, in this short amount of time, I have just seen you just really just do the damn thing. You know what I mean? And I, and I, I really, I really have to, I really applaud you because I feel like, you know, like you, like you really bring other women up. You know what I mean? Because a lot of people say that, but they don't really do that. You know what I mean? Like, like, you know, kind of when they get ready to put the money, put your money where your mouth is, they, you know, they're, you know, they, they ghost you or whatever, you know. So I just, you know, every opportunity I'd like to just tell you that because I, I, I think that that speaks volumes to your character, you know. So, yeah. and, and the same with you, uh, Dr. Salisha, you do the same thing. I, I mean, I appreciate you. I know that's not what this show is about. I just have to say this for a minute, but I really appreciate you. You know, helping me out. I mean, and and even allowing me to mm -hmm. advertise. You know, in your magazine, and just you know, if you if you say you're gonna do it, then I know I can count on that. I know that this is gonna happen. You know, so I just want you to I really, really appreciate that. So, well, I certainly appreciate you yeah. too. I I appreciate our brand is built on supporting women, and it is just a pleasure of mine to support women doing the thing. So we all need to just support each other. And that's just our motto is being courageous means uplifting, empowering each other, whatever you're doing. I've had even Dr. Nikita in, in Courageous Woman magazine and never yes, met us. Please look. Sis, my brain, my way of Dr. My Shell, brain. So. yes, queen, yes, yes. you know, <laughs> I tell folks, look, please, if ever, if ever, you know, a queens have to know my heart, I say, if anything, I say, honey, charge something to my head before you ever, ever even think about charging it to my heart, <laughs> because if anything, just like we talk about them squirrels, my brain would be like, uh-huh, that's right, do you see, I just went on my own stuff, I was like, that's right, <laughs> because it is literally going 28 billion thousand miles a minute up here, Jesus. That's why I need help. But no, you're absolutely right. So thank you, Queen. My brain just put that together. Lord, oh, help me, Father. Lord, what are you awesome, doing? You're awesome. amazing. So, it's just a pleasure of ours. We're, we've been here for 10 years, just okay. rocking and supporting women mm -hmm. for 10 years. What we really was birthed out of my own stress and I, out of, you know, mm -hmm. knowing God was calling calling me for a purpose and my purpose was to support other women even I started the publication with a $30 investment Come so it, we have grown and now we're rocking other publications publishing books have helped over 200 women you know and I really started I was a kid got getting into writing because my grandmother wanted me to be quiet and she could get a pencil, get somewhere and sit down and write because you making too much noise. It's just you. Why are you making so much noise? And I'm like, what you want me to write? So I started writing poetry. And then I started writing plays and got an opportunity to travel around the country performing as an actress in plays. And then wrote my own plays, traveled, traveled around the country with my own plays. And then I had a kid who became an actress, an actor. 
and moved to California. I don't know if you remember the TV show Girlfriends. He played Jabari on Girlfriends. Yes. I've had to be a stage mom. So from there, I decided, you know what? I want to write, uh, continue to write. So I found other ways to, to put my writing out there. And I decided to write fiction because writing plays, I had to deal with actors, celebrities, and all these different egos. And I said, you know what? If I write fiction, then all the characters would do exactly what I want them to do. So, so no question. That's is junkie. Now it's being turned into a movie. So um, oh, that's, that's so exciting, cool. and I'm I'm just you know in this whole right thing, supporting other women who want to turn their books into movies, plays. Mm -hmm. That's what we're all about. Okay. Wow, you know, just you know that's amazing. I just want to throw this out because you know what? I, I, I totally understand what, where you're coming from, Dr. Barry, because let me tell you, my daughter, uh, again, like I told you back in the day, that's that's really how all this even came about for me. But she is in the point right now of writing a play, and I know how hard it is to go through all of that. I mean, she loves it, that's her passion. But yeah, I mean, that's amazing. That's amazing to turn something into that, to this, into now. So listen, he can do it. He'll do it. Won't he do it? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Took me from Flint, Michigan to Los Angeles. So yes. <laughs> Come on. I was just about to say that. I remember the, the Michigan piece. Because I remember when you said you was from Michigan, I was like, really? Yeah. yeah. We moved here with you know, four kids and a dog. <laughs> left us, but that's okay, though. I still love you. <laughs> I think that was exciting what you said. Something that you know, I, I like. I said no, no takers and money makers. I'm writing notes, but just for thirty dollars. I mean, for those who are listening, I mean, it wasn't even a huge investment that you, you know, when you started and look where you are today. I mean, that's amazing. Yeah, I was just at a point where I I needed to do it, and I just believe that when God gives you a vision, He's gonna give you provision, and I had to believe that that thirty dollars was going to give give me what I needed, and mm -hmm. so I had the resources. I knew people. It was my community. I had restarted my life, moved back to Michigan with nothing, one child in a suitcase. Okay, and I had to get it. Okay, so we did it, and the first uh, first um. Uh, publication was uh first magazine we did was four thousand copies we distributed throughout the community and it started with just a vision and the thirty dollars that's it wow. yes that's it mm. yes you gotta believe absolutely that part right there you just gotta believe i mean yes. when i first did this i didn't i don't even know if it cost me thirty dollars because my mind wasn't on the money it was kind of like this was just something well actually what happened was i had done some interviews for another magazine and because she was working on some other things i was like i gotta do something with these interviews or people gonna think i'm crazy like how are you interviewing people with nowhere to put these interviews and so i just i just did a little um you know just a little research on hey asking questions the first thing i would tell people is don't be afraid to ask questions i was like okay so what's my next step um because i will say the hardest part for me was actually coming up with a name for the magazine, but getting that domain and everything, everything I did kind of pushed me to the next step. Um, I didn't know where to get a photographer. I just happened to know one from a live interview I did with someone with Trey Cheney, I think it was from The Wire. And after that, I went to the photographer there and say, hey, I don't know anything about what I'm doing, but can you help me out? What is your fee? And he said, we're not going to talk about fees right now. Let's just jump in. And he is still my photographer to this day, 10 years later. So mm. I mean, sometimes it's just what you believe. And then things will just, you know, step into we'll place. Your for vision. You. Yeah, you know what? Yeah. People seeing your vision, too, because, I mean, it has been amazing. I mean, a little over a year and we've blessed a lot of ladies just in Tap yeah. Magazine. But you know what? When you got something that is, is is can truly really uplift and help another another lady or another woman, I mean, they see the vision. So I mean, yeah, yeah. That's, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yep, because I love tap in. I have been with, I have worked with Tandra, and I love tap in. So um, I'm hoping to actually communicate with all of you all. And yes. Dove Sound Magazine is definitely a platform I love to share. I'm listening to. I heard um, Dr. Um, Barry and um, Dr. Davis and Tandra. We talked. Um, also talk about empowerment. And it's funny because the mission for Dove Style Magazine is to enlighten, empower, and inspire. Um, and that's people, places, and things. So that's our mission in a nutshell. And all of you all are just consistent mm -hmm. with that. So Jacqueline, it was, it's just kind of like everything is orchestrated. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This yeah. Is, I mean, I, I love it, you know. And, I, you know, and the fact that you guys are just sharing openly about it, you know. So we talk now. Now, forgive me if I put a question out there and everybody didn't have a chance to answer it, did I? I don't remember now. We know when with so many different. <laughs> yeah, the, the squirrel then took us. <laughs> squirrel. I feel like my son is four. Y'all, I, y'all might not know. Y'all, I don't know how old y'all. If y'all got little babies, I got a little baby. Four. Well, I got a fourteen-year-old and a four-year-old. But there's one little. What's the little acorn? What they say? We found the acorn. They found it over here. They found <laughs> the acorn. I don't know what I'm talking about. See, y'all, y'all got older. Okay, they be trying to find the acorn. Y'all trying to play me. You trying to find the acorn because it's the squirrel trying to find the acorn. Right. <laughs> I have to give it up to you. Okay. I mean, I have a 10 year old, okay. you know, and you know, just being working and running a business and you know, having a family and everything. Oh. That's, I'm sure we could, we could all talk about that. That's a whole nother subject. Oh. I know, yeah. I I'm, a, I'm a grandmother. <laughs> yeah, me too. I'm a GG. Right. Grandmama. <laughs> Come on, GG. <laughs> so that, that means they get to they get to go home. Right? That's oh, right. Yeah. Right. Right. See y'all next week. Yeah. 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 Some days I don't even know how I, I just be like, you know what? I, I that's why the name again, name of the company is Jesus Coffee and Prayer because <laughs> I have no. I mean, some days I'm just like I don't even know how. I'd be like, Lord, it's nobody but you. People be, oh, Queen, you're just so you're doing so. I'm like, you got to know it's nobody but the blood of the Lamb because I have no clue on yeah. how I am able to do all of this with these four and fourteen. So four year old son who is what you think of, he's, I mean, my children are amazing, but he's a four-year-old son. So rambunctious, bop, 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 rock him, sock him. What do you think of a four-year-old boy? 14-year-old daughter, who's a 14-year-old teen. So whatever you think of a 14-year-old daughter. Mm -hmm. Yes, this is what I have. They're (laughs) homeschooled. <laughs> like you know, so my brain, I'm just like Jesus. Oh, they're homeschooled. Well, yeah, so they're at home with me. Yeah. Okay. Now, of course, you know, my husband works from here as well, so it's like okay. we're here, you know. And I, of course, I travel da 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 da, and I got my different mm-hmm. locations too. But it's a lot. I'd be like, Lord, y'all, if anything, Queen, play a royal position. You praying for me? I'm praying for you. Are you praying? For, are you really praying for your Queen? You'd be like, Oh, Queen, out here doing it. Are you praying for me though? <laughs> you know what? With a, with a, and doing all of this virtual learning, I, I needed everybody's prayer. I, I, it's a lot. So when you said homeschool, you saw that kind of that kind of rang up. Whoa, whoa, wait, wait a minute. Is that what you said? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't see how teachers do it. I, I'm just gonna keep it real. I don't see how they do it because I like to lost my mind in here working. <laughs> In, in, in home in homeschooling, Lord have mercy. Mm-hmm. I did it for four kids. <laughs> wow. Wow. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Okay. Look at Tandra like, mm hmm. Look, now yeah. listen. That's nice. She's like, that's nice. No, <laughs> I'm, I'm saying that is in wow. You know what? I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm just saying, she's like, that's nice. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm empty nester. Listen, but yes. you know what? I, I, still feel, I have a, I have a daughter who just graduated from Spelman. One graduated from Howard. Yay! Yeah. Spelman's uh, sister. Uh, her, <laughs> one one got her a master's degree at Carnegie Mellon. The other one is getting her master's at what is it? Um, Memphis University. Mm-hmm. Listen, I feel like I'm still homeschooling too. Because guess what? They hear all the time. <laughs> they hear all the time. So you know, yeah. So mm-hmm. listen, this I think is I think you know what. We we it's it's just some perfect timing when things happen. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. like when we get ready to do something, you know, I think God just makes a way. Like you said, listen, uh-huh. he just opens up the door and allows you to do the things that you want to do to bless the other people. Cause you know, it's all about us serving others, right? You know what I'm uh-huh. saying? That's Absolutely. really how we get our blessings. But yeah, I mean it's amazing that what we can do uh-huh. as you know, 
uh, parents, you know, great GGs, look, you know, business owners. Well, and he and he shifts it depending on yeah. where you are. So, you know, when I when I launched the magazine, it was what 10, 10 years ago, but my son just graduated from UMS, UMES. He's the youngest. Mm -hmm. I actually have you know stepchildren, it's seven of them all together, but my oldest is um, my daughter is 30 something. So the grandbaby kind of got incorporated into it, but mm -hmm. I didn't kick into a lot of the other things that I do until they had gotten out of the home and I could more so focus on what I wanted to do. It didn't stop me when they were younger, but I was just limited in, in what I could put time into. But as soon as they got out that door, it was like, OK, it's going to be what with Gigi, mama, wifey, whatever my name is for the moment. I'm going to do what I want to do. Right. right. And then he opens those doors depending on. And then, of course, we're all working from home. So we had to shift when we started working from home because I was working from home here and there, but not like every day, all day. Um, so that was a shift in itself. But it did open another door for me to be able to uh, do more multitasking than I ever thought I would be doing. Um, <laughs> But yes. I I heard Dr. Um, Davis say that she didn't know how sometimes I, people would ask, how do you do all of these different things mm -hmm. with these hats and I, launching new businesses and stuff? And I said, I don't it has to be um, God because I don't know. I, I really all looking right. at someone else, I would be like, you don't have enough hours in the day to do all of this. And even now, if somebody asks, I really don't have any other answer because I don't think without <laughs> him. I could do all of this. So it's, yeah, I can't explain it, you know, any other way. So mm -hmm. I feel you on that. Mm -hmm. Facts, mm -hmm. facts, facts, facts. Yeah, his hands yeah. all over it, all over it. So I just flow with him. He said, go, I just go. When he say stop, mm -hmm. I shift to hey. something else. So, you know, my, my, my saying is the blessings in the show up. Listen, as long as we keep yeah. showing up, you know, God, he going to give it to mm -hmm. us. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's all in God's timing. Whatever yeah. we were doing, we were in preparation for where we are. Oh, I love right that. It's about that preparation. And even we didn't even really realize it. I had no right. idea, you know, <laughs> the things that I was doing, even with my kids, that you know, it was preparation because I have four. So it right. was like, oh Lord, you yeah. know, so I'm yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. so yeah. <laughs> so yeah, child. I know. But when they get grown and they get <laughs> They gone. You know, I know you said you're an empty nester. I know yeah. this this office used to be a daughter's room. I was yeah, mine too. Mine too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Listen, I, I totally understand it. But yeah, I mean, so I mean, it's good. I mean, I'm loving what everybody's doing, what everybody's publishing. Mm -hmm. I think, mm -hmm. you know, it's just it's, it's just been amazing for us to be able to. Here's the thing about it is there's there's so many different ways that we can publish. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And I think that how we're doing it is impacting so many people. But y'all listen, just about each, every one of us here is all international. Mm -hmm. You know, we're doing some amazing things. We're just thinking not only did we touch lives here and empower here, but we went international and made some movement in there. I mean, that, that that's amazing by itself. I mean, we're touching other women that don't even understand a lot of the culture things over here, what we're doing. Right. Can you imagine right. what we're doing? So yeah, I mean, I'm loving the I'm loving the way how everything's going. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> so let me ask this. I know we touched on earlier about digital, and then there's print, and I just recently learned that you can do a digital magazine and 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 I guess make it available as needed in print. I guess yeah. so. And you know, and I, I I don't I don't know the first the first thing about publishing. So may, maybe one of you can just just kind of help help me out. Like, where do we? How do we? How would they start it off? Like, you know, just kind of if there's someone out there, you know, and, and jump jump in whatever you feel comfortable, you know, sharing. But how would they go about um, starting the uh, digital uh, magazine, or, or, or what are some of the things that they need to consider before they do it? And and the, the same for if they want to self-publish, let's just say. What you know, what, what types of things do they start do they need to do research on? Well, I would jump in with the magazine and then um Tandra, you all can um fill in. But actually when I first started, I went total digital. Um, because print was a whole other beast. Um, and I, I wasn't ready for print. <laughs> 
But I said, let me just get out there with digital. Um, and it was kind of before everybody was really into, you know, they really wanted to do the print, which I really wanted to do. But financially, that's a whole nother can of worms. So I said, well, let me start off with digital. And I actually did some, some research on different um, platforms that I wanted to use, like how I wanted it to look. Um, so the first thing I did was just kind of take a look at other digital platforms, how I wanted the pages to move, how I wanted it to look, how I could alter it. I also wanted to look at things that I could possibly do myself because then you have you know financially you have to bring somebody on board that's going to you know update your stuff so i was like okay so i need to learn wordpress and know how to not have to wait on someone else to do something is this something i can manage myself so i initially started off doing it all myself um and that was even writing stories articles or whatever thing it was just the lisa dove dove style magazine <laughs> magazine um and then i brought people on board that would just kind of you know hey i'm into writing i would love to come on board and and did it that way but i started off with just looking at different platforms that they offered i don't know what's out there now necessarily but what they offered um for a look how i wanted the magazine to be when someone mm -hmm. went to visit it where the pictures were sitting and, and those mm -hmm. kind of things logistically that's what i first kind of went for and then i went from there so okay yeah so, so is, is it i guess is, is it a safe assumption to say that it's it's more cost effective yes to, definitely to, to do a digital magazine i guess especially now since things are you know, everything's online now. So I guess it, you yeah, just, right. just have to make a decision. It does, yeah, like Tandra said, I mean, you, you're reaching <laughs> what I didn't realize. I mean, I think um, mm -hmm. Dr. Barry was saying, I didn't realize that digital was going to reach globally. I wasn't even thinking along those lines. I was just like, I just want to do this magazine and, <laughs> and my family and will read it. And I'll have, you know, people who are doing things in the community. But yes, it was, you know, I was able to reach, you know, all kinds of countries and things. And I was like, why are they looking at my, you know, you get paranoid at first, like, why are they looking at my magazine? What's going on? <laughs> Cause you, you know, it's a crazy world out there sometimes. But I mean, that was like exciting to me um, because then you want to know, well, what are they attracted to? Um, so, you know, I set it up so I would know what articles are they attracted to? What's going on? You have people from other countries mm -hmm. say, hey, I would like to do a piece in your magazine. That was exciting. Um, but it kind of grows. Nothing just dropped like immediately. Everything was there. It's a gradual you know, step by step, but digital was just kind of like why it's expanded so much more. But the print, I never got away from. I love print. Mm -hmm. So it was like, I'm going back to that. I can't do this every month. But in the beginning, it was like every now and then I do want to do a special edition or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Okay. Actually, you know what? And this is so okay, so that, that's a little bit of, in reference to the magazine. Now, what about the actual? Like, when you get ready to self-publish a book, or um, you're doing an, an, you know, publishing an, an anthology. So I'm not trouble mm -hmm. saying that word. Like, what do they need to? Be, because e even with books, right? I mean, like with the Kindle and I don't know all these other apps <laughs> and stuff like that. I mean, I, I guess people are have moved away from like hard copy, right? I hope <laughs> not. <laughs> you mean as far as the books? <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, right. right. Yes, yeah. as far as the book. So if, if someone is wanting to self-publish, like would you should they explore different platforms? Like how should they start out doing what? So well, this, I'm sorry. Go, no, go, ahead, go, ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. So this is what I would say, and this is the way I look at You're anything right. before I approach everything. I don't care what it is. I know we were talking about publishing one-on-one, -on -one, but I don't care if we were talking about uh, um, we getting ready to go into a shoestring business. Okay. So journey with me on a shoestring business. We can ready to sell these bottle tops. Okay. I'm looking at starting with the end in mind. What is my goal? Who is my target audience? So before I just say paper or plastic, before I just say I'm going to go digital or before I say print, what, why, who, where, what? You see what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. where are you trying to go with this? Who are you trying to reach? So if I know that the people I want to reach are stateside, if I know the people I'm trying to reach are global, then I know, you, you see what I'm saying? So if I know I want an international reach, well, then I need to go digital, right? Mm -hmm. Unless I plan to be on planes, trains, and automobiles every day to go to Switzerland, 
which I'm probably not every day if I live in Georgia, then I need to go digital. That's going to be the fastest route for me, whether it's a magazine or whether it's a book or shoestrings or this bottle top. Right. Um, And so I look at it from that stance. But if I'm, say, selling those shoestrings and my local main market is here in Georgia, then maybe I will print it off or maybe I will actually have the physical bottle top because I can go door to door or have my sales agents go door to door to put it in their hand. So I'm using that analogy or these anthologies, because I want to give a tongue twister. No, I'm just kidding. Because <laughs> I want to, no, I'm just I want to give riddles. No, but I'm I'm saying that to say whoever's listening to this, know who you want to impact. Who is your target market? That's the point I'm trying to make. So whoever you want to reach, where are they? Who do you want to pick up the book, the magazine or the physical book? And so based off of that or who you want to impact, then you can make that decision. Now, at the end of the day, I'm going to do both. Now, let's just keep it 100 because you want to maximize, right? Digital and print for my books from Jesus Coffee and Prayer Christian Publishing House. We do both. We do the ebook and we do the print book. So any of my clients who do business with me, we do both. From the magazine side of the house, right now we are digital, but as Tandra just stated, you know, and just like Lisa, we do have some options where you can get the print, right? Because print is more expensive, it just is what it is, unless you are popping out like Essence or Mm -hmm. some of these major, major publications that have been in, you know, been around for a hundred years and they got big bank rolls, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars, which I don't have yet, You know, so then they can buy by the butt load or by the bulk load, if you will, Mm -hmm. um, until they reduce costs. So until you have that price point, it's cheaper to keep her digital. And then (laughs) on your special limited editions, then (laughs) I go ahead and pop it out. So if I've got a conference or a a special venue event, then yes, I'll go ahead and do that. That'll be an option. But for the most part, digital, of course, is going to be the cheaper overhead you get the most value that you get to keep in your pocket and you still can delight your customers, your speakers, or whoever's inside your advertisers. You can reach still the same amount of people. As a matter of fact, you reach more people. So that would be my recommendation. But it's to start with the end in mind and to start with knowing who your clientele is, who's your target customer. And that's how I work with it. So that's my story I'm saying to it. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I, I would agree with Dr. Dr. Nikita. When I first started Courageous Woman, uh, I want my focus was local, local women, local businesses, uh, entrepreneurs in the community, and so that's what our, our target was, and and it was print. So the advertisements are what supported the publication. They they pay for the print. No, we weren't Essence and we weren't charging $100,000 per page. We made it comparable to you know, a low for a local publication so that it was affordable for the small business in the community to give them um, some visibility and promote them in the community, bringing the community together. Um, mm-hmm. However, Courageous Woman actually had started as a blog. So I had a national audience, but I was doing... Um, uh, local. So I decided, you know, we're going to go digital so that we can expand, so we can reach women worldwide. And that's what happened. We have women from all over the the, the world who are have been a part of Courageous Woman. So it's really, like you said, you said it's um, pr- pretty much your your target or your market. What is your goal? Where do you, who do you, who is your market? Who do you want to reach um, to even make that decision? I mean, it's, it's, it's super expensive, even now that, um, you know, publishing or printing has gone up a lot more. Mm-hmm. So um, we don't buy, like she said, a, a thousand, a hundred thousand copies per region, you know. Mm-hmm. So we want um, the women who have online businesses and women who have uh, online stores and things where they're trying to reach um, the community, you're trying to reach people by social mm-hmm. media. So we create these type of platforms and magazines. So for those um, ladies and and people were trying to reach it, um, you know, online. Okay. Mm-hmm. I, I, I would totally agree with all of you. Um, you know, for me, I just think if you could do business anywhere in the world, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's where, that's where really the digital come in at. I think too, what happens is, like I said, for our magazine, 
you're right, uh, Mrs. Uh, Dr. Berry, we made it more affordable. So people, we knew people like to talk about themselves, mm -hmm. right? We all like to talk about ourselves and conversation and everything. Mm -hmm. So by being on the front cover of the magazine, it allows you to promote the other ladies that's inside of the magazine, right? That's the whole purpose. And here's the, here's the next kicker thing. Um, not even letting you be the, the first uh, the first story in the magazine. You're not going to be the first story. <laughs> You're going to be somewhere in the midst of that story because we are trying to promote. Remember, I'm doing a whole new different swing, uh, a switch on it because I feel like if you can do business anywhere in the world, right, you find your target audience, but it shouldn't stop you. And with that digital piece should allow you to be able to expand and cross pollinate with other communities that's inside mm -hmm. of that magazine. You're right. Mm -hmm. Print is print is expensive. But here's what happened is when people are on the front cover of their own magazine, they print it themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? That that print cost is, is not, you know, I can I, I can print, you know, we have a printing place that you can go through, but the print is not even really the main factor. It's like really it's a part of your brand. And even when we started conversation, I mean, we, even when we started tapped in. For me is you're right i was looking at my target audience and i was looking at what i was trying to do i i, I focused on my why like you know why this magazine you know what's mm -hmm. the end you're right what is the end and mm -hmm. what's gonna how, how am i gonna transform people's lives when they get this magazine or get put inside my magazine mm -hmm. but i had to find a you know a, 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 an editor i had to find a graphics person i mean there's a lot of other <laughs> different things mm -hmm. that went into place even before we put all that together so I think I think it, to me, if you can do this anywhere in the world, definitely digital. You know, I'm I'm think, thinking about that, and um, yeah, I guess I was, and I was just getting ready to ask that. So you'd have to have someone, you'd have to have either, you know, people, what if uh, people just going to write articles, contributing yeah. authors, right? You have to have um, graphics person. We do, and for me, my 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 magazine, the the story comes straight straight from the person who's in it. I, 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 we don't create your story. We edit it and we make sure that it has good flow, good consistency. But you got to find someone who's a C. That's not my lane. Like you say, <laughs> back in the key to listen, that's not my lane. I'm going to give it to somebody who's the expert. And we got to know when to give the stuff to the to the next person. Hand the baton off to the person who's the expert in it. But I mean, it, what like you said, even with anthologies, what's the, what's the best way to capture someone is you have to tell your story. And a lot of people kind of get like, I don't want to be in your magazine because I don't know what to write. I don't know how to write. But there's tools out there now that allows you to be able to speak and talk that information. And then we can hand it over to an editor, right? And we have this ton of ghost writers out there. Right. But I'm just right. saying the best story comes from us. And we have to be able to, with our resources, you know, bring that to life for the person who's we're actually uh, highlighting a rolling red carpet out for them. Oh, this is so, this is very intricate. This is so good. I love it. You know, so a ghost writer, a ghost writer is someone that writes it for you, right? Like you tell mm -hmm. them, I guess you kind of dictate your story to them and they kind of whip it together. Mm -hmm. Okay. And people, and people ghost, I know people ghost write in terms of books, but people do that as far as magazines, I guess, as well. People do that on anything. You can ghost write anything, right? Some yeah. of your best sermons are ghost written. That preacher That's just true. putting the diction on it. He putting the That's inflection on it. His personality right. like that. He put his personality on it. Right. Wow. Well, I mean, even, you know, comedians and, and things like that, they're not writing, you know, a lot of yeah. them are not writing any of their the jokes. Else is writing them. Yeah, right. yeah. the speech writers. Well, I don't yeah. know. Now, Barack, he wrote his stuff. No, Barack, <laughs> don't talk about Barack. <laughs> no, Barack has speech writers, too. No. Oh, okay. No. <laughs> not true. <laughs> Next, no, <laughs> like I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. Yeah, I can't see. I can't hear it. It is, and here's the thing. To me, I think with a lot of people that get confused with ghosts, but it's okay, um, yeah. because that's not everybody's thing. Um, mm -hmm. just like when I talk to some of my clients that come on board, everybody has their role in in the company. It's like I'm pub, I'm the publisher, but my editor is the editor. So yeah. you know, even when I've done my book, she you know she's editing my stuff. I can't go in and edit. I've heard too many stories about you know you're wearing several hats on the same way. Where yeah. you can't be publishing, ed editing, graphic art. You can't be everybody. Be everything. Um, because editing to me, and I I was when I usually 
would speak on publishing, the scariest part of <laughs> publishing a book or mine was the editing. So I always mm -hmm. give forewarning at the beginning when we meet with our clients, I always say, look, you might not like us, you know, when you get to the editing part of this, we might not be friends for a minute because, I mean, you do. You touches on your feelings. I was literally like in my fit. First time I published my book, I was in my feelings for a minute because I was like, wait a minute. This is not my work. Um, but it took me a minute to understand the importance and what an editor really does, which is not dot nines and crossing T's. Um, editing is a whole craft within itself. And I think a lot of people don't realize that, that that's where your story or whatever kind of metamorph it's a, it's, it just changes into something that's beautiful. If you have a wonderful editor, um, you will, once you get out your feelings, you will be like, okay, this makes <laughs> I'm sense. Glad you said I, I, that. I was in my feelings, like, no, I didn't put it there. I put it here. Right. Um, but once yeah. I let it go, and I kind of give the, um, when you're publishing, whether it's the magazine or the book, one thing I always kind of talk about is I equate it to um, dropping your child off to a daycare or to a babysitter. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I always tell people, I said, look, I'm, I'm the babysitter. You have hired me for the job. You come and drop your baby off. Now, what mm -hmm. I'm not going to do is chase you around the car to, to, to get the baby. So you're going to have to come to the door. You're going to have to release that baby to me and let the door close and go in and have a good time. Or you're going to take this baby with you to dinner. But I'm not going to snatch him. I'm not going to take him from you. Um, so I try to, you know, put it that way. Like the only way for me to be able to nurture this baby while they're with me is that you leave, go away, <laughs> let me do this. Um, because that to me seems like the biggest struggle with people who are trying to publish their books or do things is that they don't let it go. They, they're they still holding on. They're still trying to tell you where this paragraph is supposed to be. But no, that's why you came. You know, so um, it, it's a lot of coaching with it. Um, I learned a lot just from, you know, bringing clients on and learning the business. The other thing I mentioned about publishing is you have to stay up on what the industry is doing now. So yeah. it changes. It's not always the same. Um, so there are a lot of moving parts with publishing, but the good thing is I love all of it. All of it just excites me. Um, but I, like I said, I'm words. I love pen and paper. That's just my world. So I, yeah. I love it all. I love hearing what all of you ladies are saying because I'm just like, yes, yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. So <laughs> I'm feeling it. <laughs> You know what? I just want to say one thing and then like I'm I'm gonna hand the floor over to Dr. Barry and Dr. 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 Davis. You know, one thing I want to say about people and their feelings, can we please say, <laughs> please, please, pretty please, when you get ready to do a magazine cover, I always say, you know what? The picture is everything. Oh. Ladies, help me out. Yes, the picture is everything. Yes. And I listen just from the ladies that I've talked to and been a part, you know, it's 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 not this, it's not this part right here, y'all. <laughs> can I say it? Can somebody can somebody help me out? It ain't I'm, this part right here. We got it's leave. not a headshot. There you go. And it's not a selfie. It's, it's not so a selfie, not. it's not a headshot. Don't be trying to trick us. We <laughs> know what a what a <laughs> selfie is. <laughs> yeah, I, I just want to see it all. People get yeah. in their feelings, but here's here's what happened. Just like Lisa said, you drop this off to us. We your ba you know, we we gonna take care of it. We're gonna nurture it, but we want to make sure that you look good. You look right. You know, this is your brand, and you gotta work with us. You can't just like you know. I went to the I, you know I don't know, I went to the grocery store, took a picture, you know, and you know I know <laughs> we have some fancy things that can. Can make you look right, but you got to kind of help us out and understand that, you know, I always say, listen, if, if Essence or Vogue or somebody said, hey, I'm going to put you on the front cover of this magazine, what what kind of picture would you send them? Exactly. Mm. Don't be in yes. the corner like this thinking we don't know. That yeah, we don't know because we so, don't know. But well, just, and not only that, but just one of the magazines and see what they pitch, what the ladies pitch exactly. it out like, on the front. Well, of the that pic, you right. The pictures, um, because we oh, just exactly. that's a whole, that's a whole. <laughs> I thing. know that's a whole other topic because I mean, it's even like the quality of the picture, and yeah. I think people 
realize that the more you share a picture, even if it's a professional mm -hmm. picture, if it's been shared, you've posted it on social media, mm -hmm. it takes away from the quality of it. Um, and, you know, we don't mean any harm by saying, I know I've even had to make a call and say, OK, so I get that that's a professional picture, but the look on your face or how it's presented, that's that's not a good look for you know, the back cover of this book. You want people to buy this book. You don't want people to, to be scared when they look at this picture. And, and, you know, every picture you take with a photographer is not the best picture. I mean, they take a whole lot of pictures to get that one. So, and it always seems that sometimes they like the one that's like, eh, no, not that one. But it's coming from a place of love. But I get you. I, the, really pictures are, the pictures are a whole, yeah, that's a whole <laughs> You're making me laugh. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, Queens, what I will say um, to add to this for those who may be getting to the magazine or the publishing world, because, you know, I'm in both of those. What I typically do for my clients is I have them give me multiple pictures mm -hmm. so that I choose. I make the final decision. And I do preference um, what the quality has to be, 300 DPI, and that it must be a professional photo. It cannot be a selfie. It must be taken by a photographer, right? Asking for the, the, the credit to be given for whoever took the photo. And part of that is to know that it was a professional that took it, right? Because you can't give me a name, then that means Pookie took it. <laughs> And I can't use it, right? And then I give them examples, right? So if you're looking at any of the photos that we got or any of the covers that we got for the women win or any of that, you see they are gorgeous. Yeah, they be, y'all stuff don't look like this. Mm -hmm. This is, don't send me that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. This don't send me that. Okay. So, um, so I mean, so but this is not for y'all because y'all bought. I mean, I'm just saying for people who are watching, who are thinking, because I've seen like never before, folks are starting their magazines and becoming publishers and all of that, and that's even for them with the anthologies on the back. You know, we'll have a bomb, uh, or I'll be a part of other people's anthologies too. Everybody's cover or um, their picture for the back looks amazing, and then I'll see one where they take that, so it make everybody look jacked up, and I'm like. I'm not the visionary author. I just happen to be a part of this project. And I'm like, DM Queen. Hey, did we take a look at everyone's? You know, not, not being picky, but just like, can we get another picture from this queen? Because it's bringing down the overall collective, right, mm -hmm. from a professional standpoint. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I feel like we as sisters, we don't want to hurt people's feelings, but we're a business. And so Definitely. one of the things I preach about all the time when I step on different platforms to speak is that, you know, I know a small business, if you make less than $6 million, you're considered a small business. But I did SpeakerCon this year. I was one of the uh, platinum uh, sponsors. Tandra was one of the sponsors too. Come on, shout out. Come on, Queen. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Barry was on there too. Yeah. I don't know if you were there. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, I know we was about that life this year. Anywho, um, I, I spoke my spoke um, my speaking. I told him, I said, look, I'm not a small business. I'm a big business. If you are in business, I'm hoping you're in business to make money and to make an impact. Then you got to treat your business like a business. That's right. And so just about just trying mm -hmm. to be sweet and trying to be nice. And oh, I don't want to hurt her feelings. Her being on your cover, that's your brand, too. And so I don't, I don't worry about her feelings. I love you, sis. Exactly. I love you with the love of the Lord. However, right. that's your brand and it's also my brand. Jesus Coffee right. and Prayer is my brand. Women that's Win right. is my brand. So I'm not going to let you mess up my brand and what's going to be associated with me. So my brand, I'm not saying I'm perfect and I have it all together, but it is a spirit of excellence if you know me. And mm -hmm. so therefore, we need to fix this or you're going right. to miss the deadline and we're going to do it on the next one. So that's what's going to happen. So, you know, or probably in my policy is say no refunds, no transfers. So you probably just miss it all together. So I'm just saying, so <laughs> you can fix this in the next five minutes or baby, we got to keep the train going. <laughs> you know. No, you're so absolutely, you're absolutely right. And then we keep yeah. it moving because we don't got time. Ain't nobody got time for that. Right, right. right. You're so right. You know. You're right. And everybody should have a professional, I mean, people should just have a professional 
headshot, full shot. You just need something. I even we can go as small as like putting something on the flyer. Say you're speaking at an event, they right. use those pictures to go on these flyers. You can tell the you difference. When yeah. you put people who have done professional pictures along yeah. with a selfie picture, you can take out the background all day long and you can tell which pictures were done with a camera phone and yeah. were done professionally. And we just really have to kind of step up to the plate and be OK with taking that kind of criticism because it's to help you. It's not to, you know, to hurt you. We really want to present, like you said, our best selves. And, you know, yeah, we have fun with selfies. I have fun with them. But when it comes to taking care of business, then I pull out, you know, until I get some new ones, I pull out the professional picture um, and the original one um, because I'm mindful of this will be seen by all kinds of people. Do you really want, you know, the train station in the background or the, you know, the bathroom curtain in the background, you know, so, yeah. I mean, we got, we just got to be better about how we present ourselves. Pay attention to your background. What's in your background. Mm -hmm. Um, just little things that people don't think about just make the difference. Keep your hands you. out of it. Like, yes. All no, of that. <laughs> That's that club. That club. I can't. I can't. Like, I can't. <laughs> look, like, look like they had a prison pose. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> no, turn around. Like, <laughs> I want the prison pose. I just got out. No, I'm just oh kidding. My God. Just, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> kidding. I just got out of prison. I have not been to prison. <laughs> Maybe Googling Nikita Davis prison. Ain't nothing coming up. She I'm just saying, I just, I just think it's, you know what? I just think as, as ladies are coming, I mean, we all have to learn somewhere down the, the line too. And we just pass on what, you know, those nuggets of what we learn and what's so important that's going to make you look good. I mean, yes, we, you know, it's our brand too, but we want to make you look good too. Uh -huh, uh -huh. You know, like, you, know, you just got to appreciate that. And, you know, it's all love. But I mean, yeah, I think you ladies are just spot on. I, I just know that people when it comes to stuff and I've seen and I you know what I do my research 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 I do I research 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 mm -hmm. and in doing that I mean you know depending on what the theme of the magazine is you know maybe you can do some of some of that stuff depending on what the theme is because mm -hmm. there's a lot of different magazines that have you know tennis shoes you know like you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. kind of right. stuff like that um, but let's just be 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 careful what the theme is and make sure that you know your picture match the theme. Let's say that. Yeah, absolutely. Especially if you put your face on the cover of yeah. a, you know, that's one thing that we really kind of if your face is going on the cover of a book, it yeah. cannot be anything but a professional picture. And it just cannot. It's, it, there's no ifs, ands, buts about it. Yeah. Um, and people just don't understand that the selfie even okay so let's we're gonna break it down because i had a conversation even if you are taking i have a professional camera okay but i am not a photographer so when mm -hmm. i take that picture with that professional camera that is not a professional picture it was right it was a professional right. Camera because perfect, you know, it's like people don't think if you break it down and say, So, did all the things that professionals that photographers do with the camera, did you do all of that? Did you adjust the lighting? Did you we ain't doing all that when we snap a picture? We just holding on to a button a little bit longer and click, click. That means it's not professional. So, that does not equate to, Oh, yeah, I took the you know, my cousin or Joe Blow took the picture and and then you want to put it on the cover, like. No, there's certain things that I'm learning as a publisher of books. The magazine was a little oh, different. For me. Myself, me too. I have to say no. It's it's a no for me. I can't. I cannot. I love you to death, but we going. I will even send my photographer from my magazine and say, okay, I got a job for you. She wants her picture on this cover. She didn't have a. But can you please go over there? Sometimes I even foot the bill if it's like we get down to the wire. I, just please go over there and take her somewhere on location and get a picture because I can't, I cannot, I can't do it. Um, it just, you got to put your foot down some, but it's for that person. This is your book. This is your product. You, mm -hmm. you, you're going to appreciate this in the end when the book comes out. Cause yeah. yes, you're going to tell the you, difference. You, you leaving a legacy as you go. You Absolutely. Know I mean? This is your print. Your print mm -hmm. will be ever more in the space of the world. Permanente. Permanente. Mm -hmm. So yeah, 
Well, ladies, this this has been great. This has been really good. And I mean, I know I've learned a lot and I'm pretty sure that individuals, I'm pretty sure you all have learned some things. And I'm pretty sure that the ladies that are going to see this are really going to be able to, you know, give them, give them some food for thought, you know, some different things to think about and explore in reference to, you know, make and be able to make better decisions um, in terms of, you know, their next move as far as uh, publishing magazine, you know, book print, you know, versus digital. So this has been, this has been so awesome. And thank you all so much for your time. I'd like to go ahead and end by, you know, you, you guys just, I guess, Lisa, just in order to see you on the screen, Lisa, Tandra, um, Dr. Talisha, Dr. Nikita, tell them if there's, you know, anything in particular that you, the events that you have coming up that you'd like for them to participate in, as well as how they can find you. Okay. Um, so I'm excited to say that uh, I had a, a symposium last year called the Power Shut Up Symposium. I am going to do that again this year. It's based on my first um, publication about the power of shut up. Um, so I'll be doing that. It'll be virtually probably I wanted to do in person, but I'm really, really excited about that because um, the message about learning how, when, where, and if to speak on things um, is just everything to me. The other thing that I'm doing is launching an awards program under Dove Style Magazine um, called Hidden Treasures. Um, and really the focus is about um, shining the light on those who you don't normally see doing things. Um, a lot of times we recognize the same people and we kind of miss out on some people who are doing wonderful things behind the scenes and they never get recognized, acknowledged, and I wanted to be a part of just kind of shining the light on them. Um, so that'll be coming next time, this this November, December of next year, 2022. So I'm excited about that. But if you want to check out anything going on with me, because I stay busy and try to, I love social media. We also have a DSM media platform where we actually um, manage people's shows. If they do live shows, we actually take care of the background so that they don't have to switch the buttons and stuff. We do that for them and create videos and things like that. Um, but I can be found at lisadovewashington.com. And of course, Lisa Dove Washington on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all that good stuff. So, and thank you so much for allowing me to be a part and among these wonderful women. I'm hoping that we will continue to connect. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, for me, um, I got coming up. Oh my God, I got so much stuff coming up. Listen, I was telling the ladies before I came on here, you know, I asked the ladies what's one of the words that they're going into New Year's with, I mean, to the New Year with, and I said my word was crazy. Do you hear me crazy? Because it's about to get crazy. <laughs> I, okay, come on, Nikita. You got to give me that one. It's about to get crazy. So listen, what I got coming up is I got my uh, New Year's coming. I mean, my, my magazine coming out in, in March. So any of those who want to be participate in, in the Tap 10 magazine, it will be the first one will be in March. We'll go every two months after that. You'll start to see me on a couple of different um, major speaking platforms. Uh, one, which is going to be the Leadership Experience Tour, which will be in February. Uh, I think we have a couple of other uh, events that's going to be coming out in March, too, that we'll be a part of. Uh, one of my favorite things is, like I said, I bring a different spin to stuff. Is my um, It's called Get Linked. It's, it is a LinkedIn workshop that I do that helps people that are in the networking space. If you're on LinkedIn, everybody should be on LinkedIn. They should be using their LinkedIn to generate leads. But it's a way for you to have your profile start the conversation without you even doing anything. So the purpose of that uh, workshop is for you to get more appointments. So that will be coming up also at the end of March. But for any of those who want to connect with me, go to tappedinmagazine.org. Uh, you can also find me on social media, Tandra Price, uh, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Thank you, Tandra. Yes. Really enjoyed you. Thank you. Well, thank you, Jacqueline, for having me on your show amongst all these amazing, courageous women here. Um, that's a lot of things going on with Courageous Woman celebrating 10 years. So we got a lot of amazing things coming up. Um, we got writers boot camp. We got more anthologies coming up. So women want to share their stories. I think everyone has a story. It's, it's all in the way that you uh, tell your story. So we help women shape the way they want to tell their story. So uh, we got that. We got 
you know, more magazines and, and uh, as well as a, a fitness publication coming out this spring Ooh. as well. So, uh, wow. We're all about uh, self-care, all of that, because we, you know, they always say if, if mama ain't right, ain't nobody right. So we, we want to get everybody right. together mentally, physically, spiritually, fitness, all of that. So um, it's all about uh, when you want to be courageous, you got to have all that in place. So Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Nice. Love it. Well, thank you, Dr. Talisha, for joining us. Thank you. For <coughs> all right. Well, it has been an absolute pleasure. Uh, again, Queens, it's time to play your royal position. So what do I have going on? What do I not have going on, honey? Uh, it's just busy and crazy. Tondra. Price less, <laughs> but um, but it's just bananas, right? So staying booked and busy. So February, I've got my No More Breadcrumb Sis tour is kicking off all year long. We've got a five city tour stop. Uh, first stop is going to be in New York. We're going to be there for Fashion Week, February the 10th through the 12th. So if you're in NYC, come holla at your girl. We will be there. Reach out to me. I'll give you my information at the end. Then I'm super excited. Lord willing and nothing changes, Jesus. Your girl will be in Paris. I've been asked to be a keynote speaker for the Women Rise Summit. Yes, I'm super excited about that. So it's a global event. I'll be there in March, March the 8th and 9th. Then right after that, the 11th through the 12th, I'll be hosting part two for No More Breadcrumbs, sis, still in Paris. So I actually got two speaking events in Paris that same week. So one for the Women Rise event and then No More Breadcrumbs, sis, part two. Two. And then when we come back in April, I'll be hosting my Beverly Hills Girl Boss Brunch and Learn at my third location in Beverly Hills that I just purchased in November. So it's Jesus Coffee and Prayer. We're in Atlanta. We're in Miami. We've got our third location in California. So if you're looking to boss up as a speaker, an author, a girl boss, and you need some assistance, reach out. How can you reach out? Email me, info at jesuscoffeeandprayer.com. That's info at jesuscoffeeandprayer.com. And that's just Q1. Well, going into Q2 for the brunch, but we've got several initiatives. That doesn't even include the magazine. The magazine will be popping off in between there. And then, of course, we've got the television network. I am the owner of the Women Win Network. So if you're looking to be a television host, if you're looking to have your own channel, just like Jacqueline, come on, somebody, reach out. We'll be glad to get you in the game. We're on Roku and Amazon Fire TV broadcasting with accessibility to over 100 million homes. So if you want to get some visibility, we'll get you in the game. Reach out. Follow me at Jesus Coffee and Prayer, Instagram, Facebook, and the Women Win Network on Facebook and Instagram. God bless you. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, well, thank you for being here, Dr. Nikita, and all of you. This has been so awesome and so informative. I thank you, ladies. <clears throat> Excuse me. And ladies, stick around. See, I told you this was going to be good, right? Okay. You can go ahead and watch it again. You know, make sure you didn't miss anything. But definitely stick around and catch some of the other panels as well. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm Jacqueline Kabai Harrison. I am your host for A Queen's Roundtable Leadership Symposium. This is a one-day virtual event. So please check out all of the other panels as well. And if you need to reach out to me, I can be reached at my website, which is Realizing Your Potential. The number is 123.com. All right. Until next time, everyone. Take care. <laughs>